Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Granules India Limited Q2 and H1 FY23 earnings conference call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Irfan Rahim from Orient Capital. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Sagar. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. On behalf of Cranmills India Limited, I extend a very warm welcome to all participants on Q2 and H1 FY24 financial results discussion call. Today on the call, we have Dr. Krishna Prasad, sir, Chairman and Managing Director, Dr. KVS Ramarao, Joint Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer, Ms. Priyanka, Executive Director, GP, GPI and GUSA, Mr. Mukhil Surana, Chief Financial Officer, Mr. Pudit, Head Investor Relation and GM Business Finance. I hope everyone had an opportunity to go through our investor tech and press list that we have uploaded on exchanges and on companies' website. A short disclaimer I would like to say before we begin the call. This call will contain some of the forward-looking statements which are completely based upon our belief, opinion, expectation as of today. These statements are not guarantee of our future performance and involve unforeseen risk and uncertainty. With this, I hand over the call to Krishna Prasad sir for his opening remarks. Over to you sir. Thank you. Thank you, Irfan. Uh, a very good evening to all of you ladies and gentlemen. And thank you very much for attending our Q2 earnings call today. A detailed presentation of our Q2 performance had been uploaded to our website, and I'm sure all of you would have gone through it enough. Our EBITDA at and other ratios have improved and will further improve in the coming quarters. Some of the launches of the approved products, both in the US and other geographies, were delayed and will be launched in this and the coming quarters, which will contribute to higher revenue and resulting profitability. On the IT incident update, production and sales have almost rebounded to their pre-incident phase. We have fortified our cyber security measures, establishing a more robust security environment to safeguard our operations and we have instituted a comprehensive upgrade to our systems and security protocols. While we are trying to recover the business loss, we anticipate a revenue shortfall versus the planned production and sales as part of the loss sale is irrecoverable. Irre irre During the quarter, Anvisa's audit at our Bagilapur formulation plant was successfully completed with zero critical observation. We also received approval from Anvisa for compliance with the guidance of CGMP for our Bantapalli factory. Health Canada audit was complete, completed with zero observation for the GD Metla API plant. We also received the accreditation certificate of foreign drug manufacturers from PMDA Japan for the GD Metla facility. The construction of our new formulation facility at Genome Valley is progressing at a good pace, and we have completed the first phase during October 23, as communicated in the last call call. We are targeting to complete the next phase by May 24 with 2.5 billion dosages per annum capacity. Upon completion across all the phases, by December 24, this new plant will add 8 billion doses to our finished doses capacity. As shared earlier, with this facility, along with the recently launched new Greenfield packaging facility in Virginia, USA, we now have capacity in place for us to cater to emerging new opportunities and demand in the near term. Our focus on R&D over the past six quarters with enhanced outlay is geared towards fast-tracking 
integrated product development, building expertise in the areas of controlled substances, complex products, and biocatalysis and enzymes. As of today, we have 59 approved and two tentatively, tentatively approved US ANDAs. Five European dossiers, two in the UK, six in Canada, and three in other regions. A total of 75 dossiers approved and 21 global dossiers to be approved. We have a total of 33 US DMS, 24 CGPs, five EDMFs, eight KDMFs, four Canadian DMFs, four China DMFs, two Japanese DMFs, and 50 files across several regions. We have launched four products in the US and one product in the UK. In H123, and we expect the launch uh, expect to launch about seven products in the U.S., two products in South Africa, two products in the U.K., and two products in, UK, uh, in Europe in H2. The complete effect of which will be seen in quarters going forward. Climate change and sustainability opportunities. Our newly ad adopted purpose is healing lives responsibly through pioneering green science. This is guiding us towards transforming healthcare through innovation and sustainability. We are resolute in driving a positive transformation within healthcare. Our commitment is further, further solidified by our pledge to achieve net zero emission by the year 2050. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to once again emphasize, we pledge to achieve net zero emissions by 2050, a very ambitious target, and every person in the company is striving towards it. Earlier this year, we completed the measurement of our scope one and scope two emissions. Now we are in the process of inventorizing our complete scope 3 emissions as per the GHG protocol. Making a significant stride in our journey, we have received a BB rating in our first MSCI ESG evaluation, acknowledging our initial efforts in environmental, social, and corporate governance criteria. We aim to improve our ratings in the subsequent years through sustained efforts and excellence in our sustainable practices. In tandem with our strategic vision, we have pledged allegiance to the science-based targets initiative, SBTI, ensuring that our climate goals are aligned with the latest scientific consequences. Consequences, consequences sorry. Our dedication to sustainable practices resonates with the ethos of United Nations Global Compact, UNGC, to which we are committed, signifying our support for responsible business practices globally. A landmark in our sustainable journey is the MOU with Naipur Mohali, heralding the inception of the Center of Excellence in Innovative and Sustainable Pharmaceutical Development. The envisaged outcome is a suite of innovative pharmaceutical products and processes that are resource efficient as well as optimized for energy conservation. Manual C0. As shared during the last call, at C0, we are focused on strengthening our core business for backward integration of paracetamol and metformin in the first phase as we are putting up a pilot plant for DCDA and a small commercial plant for PAP at the Vizac plant. We have received the technical feasibility report and we are under final review and discussions with AM Green, which is part of Green Co, on the project planning for the Kakinada site, which will be our main facility for C0. We are targeting to start the project work at Kakinada 
during FY25. With this, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I hand over the call to Dr. KVS Ram Rao. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I wish to update you all on the progress of the transformation journey. As briefed in my last couple of conversations, there's a paradigm shift in the management of portfolio of our new products. From a traditional para-2 filing, the company has shifted its focus to para-3 and para-4 filings. The shift in focus is followed by strengthening of portfolio teams, R&D teams, technology transfers teams to enable smooth integration and filing of the products. The new portfolio of the organization is aimed at not only oral solids but also other dosage forms, leveraging the capability of graduates, technological capabilities in API and formulations. Significant progress has happened on these dosage forms and we expect to file new dosage forms in the near future. At present, there are about 41 products which are under various stages of development in Granules Integrated Product Development Center. All these products are scheduled to be filed in FI24 and FI25. Out of these 41 products, launch and approval of 16 products, day 181 launches are around 13 products. The first wave launches are around 9 products and one is an NCE minus one. To add to the number stated by the chairman in his opening remarks, we are geared up to double-digit filing of BMS and ADS that are of strategic importance to us. The program our commitment in execution of our strategy. Yet another significant aspect of strategy is to focus on sustainable new technologies. The technology development team has made significant progress on application of biocatalysis on three products. Two products have completed the pilot scale and commercial production plans. And third molecule has completed optimization in the lab. These three products can give significant and sustainable advantage for granules when they are commercialized. Global cost leadership has been one of the strategic levers identified by the organization. While the backward integration from C0 will give us the leadership for parastamol and metformin, we have started our work on additional 10 products which are critical for the organization in terms of both profit optimization and of protecting market share in geographies of interest. The program is expected to bring in the desired results in a year from now. With this, I hand over to Mukesh. Thank you, CM and JMD. Let me take you all through the top financial parameters. Revenue. The second quarter revenue were rupees uh, 11,895 million as compared to 11,507 million in quarter 2, FI23, a growth of 3% in value terms. Volume growth year on year was higher as compared to the value growth. Sales in the US region grew well, primarily partially offset by the decline in the LATAM and Europe region. Revenue grew by 21% as compared to Q1 FY24. The sales breakup as per the business division and geographic regions in the pres is presented in our investor presentation, which is available on the website. Value added. Our value added as a percentage of sales for Q2 FI24 was 51.7% as compared to 49.7% in Q2 FI23. Value added percentage as compared to Q2 FI23 is increased by 2% points, primarily on account of better product mix, increase in scale of formulations. Price erosions were offset by the reduction in rates of key raw materials. Value added as a percentage of sales for Q2 FI24 is up by 0.3% points from Q1 FI24. Primarily on account of better product mix, uh, increase in sales for formulations. Price erosions were offset by the reduction in rates of key raw materials and an increased focus on product level cost reductions. EBITDA and EBITDA margin. EBITDA for the quarter was Rs. 2,130 million, 17.9% of sales as compared to 2,429 million, 21.1% of sales in Q2 FY23. A decrease of 12% in value terms over the previous year, primarily on account of increase in operating expenses such as manpower and R&D, increase as part of capability and capacity building, which will drive future growth in short to medium term. R&D. Our R&D spend for the quarter was 496 million as compared to 246 million in Q2 FI23 and 413 
million in Q1 FY24. We are going to continue to spend on R&D in the coming quarters as well. Net debt. Our net debt was 9,895 million as compared to 7,671 million at the beginning of the year. The net debt has increased by 2,224 million primarily on account of reduction in operating cash due to reduction in revenues in Q1. Cash to cash cycle. Our cash to cash cycle was 162 days in the current quarter as compared to 132 days at the beginning of the year and 170 days in the previous quarter. The decrease as compared to Q1 happened because of decrease in inventory days as sales picked up this quarter post the IT incident in the last quarter. Operational cash flow. Operational cash flow for the quarter was 329 million as compared to 35 million in Q1 FY24. Increase is primarily on account of increase in EBITDA and better cash to cash cycle compared to Q1. CapEx. CapEx spent during the year, during the quarter was 1029 million. ROC. ROC for Q2 FI24 is 12.8% as compared to 9.3% in Q1 FI24. Primarily on account of increase in EBITDA due to the reasons stated above. With this, I open the floor for questions. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone phone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and <laughs> participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of uh, Meg Shah from Prospero Tree. Please go ahead. Good afternoon, sir. I just have one simple question. Uh, time and again, there have been, you know, many media sources and articles telling us about the sale of the company. Uh, many times, Priyanka and the promoter team both have denied such a possibility and have clarified over the same. But again, in the last one week, we have again begun to hear uh, that you are close to uh, finalization of a sale with some private equity player. And usually, media sources won't keep sharing such things again and again for no reason at all. So can you please comment on the same? Okay, Mr. Shah, I think uh, uh, I understand your concern. Let me tell you, denying this over and over again and the rumors erupting over and over again uh, man, is really disturbing. But in my opinion, just to put this at rest, rather than just denying, I would like to mention the initiatives which we have taken now towards sustainability the green chemical, enzymatic reaction, flow chemistry, so many things, formulation development, green development, and the investments we are making today are like a dream for us. Everyone in the company is so excited and they are working towards this. Uh, they are putting in our best efforts. And if at all there is any intention of doing what you suggested, this is not the way we would be going. And we would not be spending our time and effort and our blood and heart into this, what we are doing. It's something what we are trying to achieve is something nobody has done so far. I can even probably say somebody who has something which has not been attempted so far in the world. We expect to be one of the first few companies to achieve this. And do you think we'll just give up of this grand dream just for a little bit of money? Money doesn't mean much. What we are planning to do, trying to be responsible, trying to save the planet, is much more important than a few thousand crores. I don't think I can add more than this. And uh, I wish people are convinced when the media stops these type of rumors. Uh, we completely understand it. Just that the media reports keep on coming again and again. So as investors, we are just a little bit concerned. That's all. I understand it, but I'm sure I don't know if you're convinced, but I don't know what more convincingly I can say. I think this is the best answer I can put forward. <laughs> yeah, I got it. Thank you. That's all from my side. 
thank you so much. A reminder to all the participants that if you wish to join the question queue, you may press star and one now. The next question is from the line of uh, Suresh Agrawal, who is an individual investor. Please go ahead. Good evening, sir. Good evening, Suresh. So, uh, we are on expansion speed from last few years, but it's not generating any profit or rewards for shareholders. We are in the range of 100 to 140 crore profit range. Our expenses on all fronts increasing, but not fruitful. Please throw a light on this. Uh, that's Suresh, if you see, I mean, uh, your statement saying we have not grown may not be right. If you see our last five years of uh, CAGR on both top line and bottom line are uh, about around 25%. So both bottom line and top line are growing at 25%. And I think it's a decent growth in my opinion. Some companies may have a quicker growth, but revenues has been growing sustainably. And this growth is just not over the last five years. Even if you see the last 15 years, the CAGR is almost like that. And it's in proportion to our investments too. And without investments, you can never get growth. Some investments may take a little time to pay off, some pay off immediately. So this is what is happening. And we have been uh, investing very responsibly, prudently, and even in C0, uh, it could be a dream, but we are also responsible. We are not investing blindly. We are putting pilot plants, demonstrating our ability to make green products. And only after that, we're going to the next stage. So. Uh, I think uh, I have to say that we are going and we are, our investments are paying off and they'll continue to pay off. So, uh, do we have any dividend policy in the company? We have a dividend policy which Mukesh will explain. Yeah. So, we do have a dividend policy and it is also put out uh, you know, on our website, you can take it and uh, it's a pretty standard dividend policy. So can you give uh, some light on that? So, uh, you know, you, you can take it offline, but it is, uh, uh, you know, it's there in the stock exchange uh, in our website, but uh, in the policy, we are not paying specifically percentage payout and all. It depends on all profit and reserves and also availability of cash flow and uh, depending on the future expansion. But and, Mr. Yeah, sorry. Mr. Agarwal, let me also add. I think we have been one of the, uh, okay, uh, I don't want to say, but I, I personally feel we have been very uh, liberal and our shareholders liberally. In the last three years, four years, if you see, we had two buybacks, which are more interesting than even a dividend. We also had dividend last year of close to about 80% uh, or 90% in addition to the pay in buyback. So buyback was for about 270 crores, I think, around 270 crores. And that's been very liberal, liberal and, and two years before that, we had another buyback. So we've been quite liberal in our uh, rewards to the shareholders. In fact, we have been criticized by many investors for wasting money to some extent. They feel that we should have kept it for our expansion. Thank you, sir. We hope that uh, the company actually in the first few years, actually, Actually, I'm invested since uh, 2011. It has rewarded us very good in, uh, in, uh, in uh, 2017-18. But after that, uh, the company has become lethargic. Like uh, we are uh, uh, expanding in, in the America and all this. We have put up plugs there. Uh, Priyanka is looking up there. But only revenue is generating. No profit from there. And, so I think we are in some discussed circle of uh, expansion and expansion and growth and growth, but uh, not reflecting truly in the balance sheet. So it's my suggestion, please uh, do something like uh, our unit five, we have gone for uh, the center uh, molecules also, but that has not been uh, materialized. Now the Mr. like our new CMD has come, he is also going for expansion in some other fields. So please uh, consolidate. We are long-term investors. We are the few. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, uh, we understand, but I think Mukesh, maybe you can wrap up. Mukesh, sure. 
So, uh, you know, so since 2011, which you are uh, mentioning, uh, you see our return on capital employed, return on equity, net debt to EBITDA, all the parameters we have done extremely well. So, we are ensuring that we are also growing and also we are ensuring that our balance sheets and financials are healthy. So, you know, it, that's what I could uh, say. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. The next question is from the line of uh, Harith Ahmed from Evinders Park. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, I'm, I'm looking at the segmental breakup of uh, our revenues and the uh, FD sales has uh, increased sharply on a quarter on quarter basis. So, uh, and I'm uh, looking at the geographic mix as well. Uh, it's the US market, which is also seeing a sharp increase uh, on a quarterly basis. So. Uh, it appears that we've done quite well in that market on, on the formulation side. Uh, so what exactly is driving this? Are there some uh, specific launches or it's the uh, general pricing and demand environment that we're seeing in that market? Okay, I think Priyanka is going to take that. Hi, good evening. Um, like you rightly said, the U.S. market grew uh, quite significantly this quarter based on our uh, formulation growth. The only thing I'd like to add to that is um, while launches, new launches certainly are responsible for some of the growth, I think most of the growth for this quarter came from existing products. And the one stance that we've always taken is that once we enter a molecule, we don't really exit because we work on constant uh, cost improvement activities. We work on sustainability, which CMD also mentioned earlier in this call about um, sustainability being a cornerstone, of, cornerstone for our growth. So considering all that, I do want to point out that most of this growth came from our existing molecules where other companies could not sustain or supply some product. Um, so that's where the major formulation growth came from. And of the, of the FDs, uh, I mean, you see most of the FDs or PFIs have come down a bit. Most of our PFI customers are converting to finished usages. That's the reason that these are also growing a bit. Okay, and then so we can we can look at a similar run rate and uh, in the coming quarters and, and maybe growth on uh, top of this level going forward. Uh, that, that's there could be changes uh, here and there, but definitely this is the ratio. And like I always mention, FDs will be going up and PFS and APS will be coming down as we go up, as we go up the value chain. And this is this can be seen uh, quarter on quarter. Okay. Um, so I'm, I'm looking at the uh, employee costs for the quarter and for the first half. Uh, there's a uh, significant increase on a YOY basis, uh, and and uh, this is largely responsible for our EBITDA margin being a bit muted, despite the expansion that we've seen on on the gross margin front. So uh, you know what is leading to this uh, YOY increase in employee costs? Uh, have we commissioned some new facilities or and I understand there's an element of higher R and D spend, but it, it looks quite high even after factoring that. Okay. We basically uh, our MUPS block is fully operational now and we have built for uh, manpower for extra revenue. Because there was still some delay in launches resulting from uh, offshoot of the IT incident, the launches were delayed. And I mentioned in my last call, Q2 also will be hit to some extent. That has happened. So the one, uh, this manpower is built for higher revenue, and we are working towards higher revenue. And also another reason for extra manpower is, uh, in addition to R&D, is our packaging site in the U.S. New packaging site which we have built built there in Virginia. That is fully operational now. People are there, but is yet to stabilize. We expect that. Uh, end of uh, Q4, the plant will be generating cash, and uh, then the whole manpower is going to be justified. But we have to put in people ahead of uh, the actual return coming in. And again, I'm sure uh, the camera may talk about R&D. R&D manpower has also gone up quite a bit. You want to talk about how many people they have? Yeah. So we have uh, both API and uh, formulation put together. We have ramped up the manpower by almost 50% compared to last year. And uh, that is clearly reflecting in our productivity of R&D. So uh, I think uh, 
uh, we have we are geared up for the future growth both in operations as well as in our R and D findings. Okay, uh, that's helpful. Uh, thanks for taking my question. Thank you so much. The next question is from the line of uh, Nikhil Yadav from Motilal Oswal Services Limited. You may go ahead. Mr. Yadav, your line is unmuted. You can proceed with your question. Am I audible? Yes, you are. Yeah, Tushar here. Uh, Nikhil Yadav, it's Tushar here, sir. Uh, so just uh, extending the earlier comment, so with new launches like Metaprolol, uh, so Metaprolol is launched in first, uh, so first question? No, that's what I was referring to as delay, Metaprolol is not launched. There are a few other products where validations are just getting completed and will be launched uh, by the end of this quarter or early next quarter. Uh, and so that should then ideally further drive the U.S. sales uh, going forward. Yeah, that's the whole expectation. It should. Vishal, just to add to that, we have about um, seven launches planned uh, in the U.S. and the U.K. and some one in Europe over the next uh, over H2. So the next two, two quarters, you see quite a bit of an increase uh, in formulation growth. Thank you, and just on the raw materials, or let's say the gross margin side, uh, if you could bifurcate the benefit uh, in terms of uh, due to the segmental mix change and due to the lower raw material cost? Yeah, I'll clarify uh, the other. Uh, the you know, raw material cost benefit and cost improvement benefit is largely offset by price erosions also and product mix also. Uh, the major improvement has uh, happened because of increase in the ratio of population sales. Okay. And uh, secondly, even on the other expenses side, it has now moved almost up to 250 crore. So now that the MOPS facility is operational and even the packaging site is operational, so should this be considered as a base uh, going forward? Yes, this is to be considered as base and some of these results will start coming from Q4 to 1 onwards. And I, I missed the net net number, if you could just share, at the end of first half of FY24. Uh, net net is 990 crores. Thanks, that's it. Thank you. Thank you so much. The next question is from the line of uh, Rahul Veera from Abacus. Please go ahead. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, just a quick question on the uh, Genome Valley formulation facility. Uh, has it, uh, is the CAPEX on track, sir, to st start in this quarter? Yes, uh, Rahul, it's on track. But the first thing that we actually, you know, we did a puja a few days ago, okay. that was for the pilot plant. So now there is a manufacturing section which will come up in another six months with 2.5 billion capacity and maybe end of uh, uh, I mean, by December of calendar year 24, uh, the entire capacity of 8 billion would be online. If everything is on track, we will be making some filings from the pilot plant in the next uh, next month, and which will trigger off an inspection from the FDA. And by the time the site is approved, we would have had the capacity running. A few months here and there. Sure, sir. Uh, so, so over the next six months, other than metoprol, which could be the other large key molecule where our expectations are very high. In US. I don't think we can share the products, but we do have quite interesting molecules. And as and when we launch, maybe you will be understanding, or you, as you keep tracking our approvals, also you would understand. But I don't think we we, we should be naming these products ourselves. Right. No. So, which are the ones where our expectations are very high, which are in the public domain, but our expectations are very high, like two key molecules. You know, because for H1, we've done 2,000 crores of top line, and uh, our Ideal guidance in the last quarter was 20% on last year's base. So 4,500 crores was the top line FI23. So to move to 5,400 crores of top line, we have to do like 1,700 crores over the next two quarters each. In this quarter, there is some, this year, there is a loss sale which cannot be recovered. So, but still, all I can tell you is there are good launches which we are sure we can pick up. We have already been talking to customers. There's good traction happening. 
we cannot name what it will be, but definitely it's interesting and exciting. But again, I have to remind you, we cannot keep looking on quarter on quarter. It's a long-term strategy we're playing, even though we are confident of the next few quarters. And uh, we will be seeing good improvement. Sure, sure, sir. And uh, our CAPEX is 700 crores for this full year, FY24. So uh, CAPEX is 700 crores is the you know, um, uh, guidance we have given. We have spent so far about close to 180 crores. And uh, we probably would uh, spend another 400 crores or so in the, in the X2. Sure, sure. Perfect, sir. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, would like to remind that in case if you wish to join the question queue, please press star and one now. The next question is from the line of uh, Madhav Marda from FIL. Please go ahead. Hi, good afternoon. Thank you so much for your time once again. Uh, just wanted to understand on, I think in the beginning uh, of the call, I think um, as I saw mentioned about uh, the EBITDA ratio for us to improve in the coming quarters. Just if you could remind us what are the key drivers? Is it basically uh, newer launches which are maybe better margin and then operating leverage uh, from the fixed cost that we've added? Is that the right way to look at the uh, drivers for the margin improvement? The mother, as I mentioned uh, a little while ago, the entire infrastructure is now built for higher capacity. Now, we need to produce high, which we will, and sell them. And this is also be partly driven by existing molecules in new geographies. Like I said, we have some approvals in Europe, South Africa, and all, and also new products in the U.S. So these are the new launches, plus increase in existing products, which will drive growth. And also, if you could just remind us of our um, uh, basically paracetamol, which we wanted to sell more uh, in outside of the U.S. market, just how is that scale up happening for us, uh, like Europe, the sector, or South Africa? Uh, we've got quite a bit of approvals. More than 50% of those are paracetamol in Europe and South Africa, uh, U.K. So the paracetamol in these geographies is growing in the form of formulation. And in the same market, the API sale of uh, paracetamol, uh, we expect will be coming down as formulations increase. And obviously formulation should be better margin than selling API, right, of the same form? That's right. That's right. The product mix is what will drive the margin. As we graduate more towards a deal, the margins also should keep changing. That's the expectation we had all these years, and we keep harping on that. But without the support of APIs and PFIs, uh, the whole equation will not work too. And so now, the IT incident, I think there was some impact in the early part of the Q2 as well. If we, like you all did quantify in Q1, there was uh, about 150 crore of sales impact. Uh, anything that you could share for Q2, how much was that impact uh, for us in the earlier part of the quarter? It is a little difficult to quantify that, uh, Madhav, uh, because some of the launches were delayed too. It's not only the production. But, but I'm happy to say that the last month uh, of the quarter uh, was normal. We have returned to normalcy. That's why I said in my opening statement we are back to near normalcy. Uh, we are in a normal state of uh, running right now. So basically, like Q3, we should see full like normalized operation now. There's no like issue. Q3 should be a normal operation, as anticipated uh, in the past. Absolutely, got it. Thank you. Thank you so much. The next question is from the line of uh, Varun Basur from Julius Care. Please go ahead. Uh, good afternoon. I hope I'm audible. Good afternoon. Yeah, uh, good afternoon, sir. Uh, so, just a couple of questions. Uh, number one is that uh, you know there's been some inventory build-up. I'm assuming this is in line. This is uh, you know to support whatever launches are happening in each two. Has there been an element of? Uh, uh, will there be some sort of write-off? You know, in line with whatever lost uh, sales has been uh, in, in done in the first in the first half. Uh, that's my first question. The second question is, you know, there have been issues in the uh, you know, last couple of last three quarters or so, first with the three PL changeover and then with the cyber attack. Uh, I'll 
is there any element of this which is going to come into H2 uh, or you know I, I just just uh, if you could reiterate all of that and uh, yeah that's that's all from my side and uh, that's yeah. happy to be valid to uh, all the participants. Okay, well, Mukesh, are you yeah. going to take that? Varun's valid observation, the inventory built up has happened and also uh, largely for the new launches and also to serve the USA uh, region uh, because uh, we need to carry some inventory in USA to serve there. And uh, there are no such issues in terms of you know inventory write-off and or anything uh, or loss of sale or anything in which to. So these are inventory built up to serve uh, launches in the uh, expected sales. And there is an increase in, uh, yeah, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, sure. And OPEX, that there was some issue with third-party logistics switch over. That entire thing is behind us at this point, right? Or, you know, is there some uh, some spillover that's going to happen? Yeah, the expenditure has substantially come down, almost to negligible. I would request Priyanka to add on to it. I just want to add one point to it. that the transition to our new 3PL has completed, and we've seen a very significant improvement in our auto rates. So they might, uh, this past quarter, we might have had a very small spillover and possibly a very small spillover the, year, the next quarter, but there's nothing that is uh, substantial enough to discuss right now. All, all right, uh, thank you. Thank you so much. The next question is from the line of uh, Vikas Sharda from NT Asset Management. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, a couple of questions. Uh, one is on the product mix. You talked about uh, increasing share of formulations, and this quarter it is over 60%. Any guidance you can give on where do you think the, the share can go up to, say, in the next two to three years? Uh, uh, so two to three years uh, should be in that range, but quarter on quarter we should not be tracking. So this quarter, let's say whatever we show, uh, whether it will be same in future, two for a difficult answer, but beyond here it should be in that range. Uh, and uh, going forward, it will go beyond 60 percent. And uh, secondly, you said that the first phase was of IT incident is like the product. Sorry to interrupt, yeah, Mr. Sanda, there is a lot of disturbance from your line. Yes. Still, sir, we are not able to hear you. Could you please come in the better reception area? Why don't we take the next question and come back to Vikas? Uh, yes. So we'll take the next question from the line of uh, Mr. Yash Malhotra from JM Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. I just would like to know your current optimization levels and where do you plan to take it further? Uh, so, the optimization levels uh, have to kick in QP onwards. So, uh, as the uh, chairman has explained, uh, you know, we have taken up a higher expenditure. Uh, in quarter two, uh, optimization and automation uh, effectiveness will start from QT onwards. Is that the question? Have I answered what the question? What you raised? Okay, no levels as in percentage. Sorry. You expect Sorry. your. Sorry. Yeah. 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 Go ahead. Okay, I understand. You expect it to kick in Q3 onwards. That's right. All right. Mr. Malhotra, you have any more questions? No, that's it. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to join the question queue, please press star and one now. The next question is from the line of Nirali Shah from Ashika Group. Please go ahead. Hi, um, Yes, Nirali. Yeah, so in the last call, you had actually mentioned that um, the legacy, that our top legacy products were no longer the top products, that is the acetamol, metformin, hydrocrofin, and um, that this pecking order will change, and uh, probably these products will be replaced by more complex products. 
that are upcoming. So if you could update us on this more complex product. Yeah, that is the legacy products will always keep growing, always maintain. There's a lot of uh, market for those products in new geography, and they continue to grow. Why? Uh, in in the new market, a new product when we launch, which will be better profitable and uh, volumes may not be the same level. Uh, but going forward in the next uh, one or two years, we still see that our legacy product will at least be more than 65% and uh, the rest will be from new product. Even though the margins may vary, but the sales mix will be somewhat like this. Okay, thanks. And uh, my second question is, um, can you also update us on the backward integration projects, uh, mainly DCDA and TAP? Yeah, DCDA, we have, to, we have to put up a small pilot plant because this is a technology being implemented by us first time in the world and patented technology. So we just wanted to start at a pilot plant and then go on to the main plant. The pilot plant will start in February. And meanwhile, the planning for the main plant is on. The equipment also has been ordered. And that should start sometime in uh, FY25 of uh, uh, DCDA. And uh, PAC, we are start planning to start a mini commercial plant in uh, Wysak, uh along with the DCDA which should happen next year. Uh, the reason of starting in Vizac is on Kakinada site, where we plan to do things zero and all the green chemicals and intermediates. is still not ready, the power has to come in. Rather than waiting, we just wanted to start something, run it and master the whole art. And then by the time the site is ready, we'll be ready to go there. Okay, understood, thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Mr. Varun Mishra, who is an investor. Please go ahead. Hello. Yeah, hi, sir. Am I audible? Yes, yes, Varun. You are audible. Yeah, yeah, hi, sir. Actually, I just had one question. Like, we have seen the raw material prices have come down in this current quarter. So, like, do we see this similar trend to continue for the rest of the year? Or is, like, the prices have a bit, like, it has it stabilized? I think uh, we see that the raw material prices have come down. We believe that it has touched its bottom plateau and uh, and we will continue to monitor it as the signals from the external world keep coming in. But as of now, I think it is at a reasonably low level. Okay, okay, fine. That is my like, that's just my question. Thank you. And happy Diwali in advance, sir. Thank you. Happy Diwali to you. Thank you so much. The next question is from the line of Nagesh Motamari, who is an individual investor. Please go ahead. Good evening. Initially, I would like to congratulate the team for the good results of the quarter. And I would like to know about the debt component. Is it in Indian rupees or foreign currency debt? And what is the cost of the debt? Uh, before uh, uh, CFO takes that uh, question, I just want to tell you, Nagesh, thank you very much for uh, the congratulatory message. But yeah, we all realize we have a long way to go. We are working towards it. And yeah, it's a, uh, it's a continuous process. It's not a destination. Yes, it's a continuous process, it. and we are trying to make up for lost ground. And True. So, Nagesh, you can go ahead and answer that. So uh, our uh, borrowings are in foreign currency, and uh, it's a mix of long-term loan as well as uh, short-term uh, working capital. And uh, we are uh, borrowing in uh, so far less uh, effective spread, so which is which is at uh, you know very competitive rate. Okay, what is the component of working capital and the term loans? Sorry, what is that? The yeah, breakup sorry. of the total uh, debt. Yeah. So okay. out of that. Yeah, out of 990 crore, 150 crore is uh, long term. Okay. The balance is the working capital. Yeah. Good. And uh, by any chance you are in the PLI scheme? So uh, currently we have applied for PLI scheme for our new uh, DPGA 
Uh, okay. Okay. So there are no other payments. Okay. That's all. And the no dividend has been declared for this quarter, right? No. We thought we will. This quarter we have been getting yes. some interim dividend. The interim itself will go for final dividend at least, you know, that they pay a sizable number. Okay. Okay. Anyhow, all the best. Thank you. Thank you so much. The next question is from the line of uh, Rahul Veera from Abacus. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Uh, by any chance, uh, any update is there for the DCDA getting the PLA approval for us? It's approved, actually. We have the approval for the uh, DCDA uh, okay. for 8,000 tons. We didn't want to go beyond that. Well, okay. even though our plan for manufacturing is 30,000 tons, when we applied, we applied only for 8,000 because there's a liability if you don't get to that number first. Right, right, right. Fair point, fair point, sir. Thank you. And wish the granule teams a very, very happy Diwali, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Before we take the next question, we would like to remind participants that you may press star N1 to join the question queue. The next question is from the line of Shivendra NS. Who is an investor? Please go ahead. Hi, um, thanks for the opportunity and uh, congratulations to Team Brandis again on a very good uh, set of numbers. Um, I just have one clarification, not sure if it was already covered in the call. Um, what are your thoughts on the IT issue um, and uh, how do you see that? Uh, I mean, uh, do you see that impacting uh, margins going forward? Uh, or is this done and uh, has, it, has it been resolved and it's in the past? Right issue. Yeah. So uh, I think uh, the IT issue, whatever we have faced in the quarter one, uh, uh, it had a spillover effect till middle of the next quarter. And we have currently resolved all the issues. And as pointed out by Chairman in his speech and later, that the last month has been normal and we are absolutely back on track for uh, the regular production and dispatches and all operations have become normal. And uh, although although it has got its own uh, uh, regularization happened last month, but uh, it had its impact in terms of the revenue, which was also stated in the speech of the chairman. And going forward, uh, uh, I just, uh, I think the last part of your question, was we have taken enough security measures. We have done a lot. And uh, I think we are at a much, much, much better state of preparedness to face a cyber attack. We, I mean, people keep getting attacked every day, and we keep monitoring what's happening. Thank you. That, that, that helps. Thank you so much for the response, and happy Diwali to you. Happy Diwali to you, too. Thank you so much. The next question is from the line of Tushar Pohra from MK Ventures. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity and congratulations to the management for a strong bounce back uh, from the issues of the previous quarter and uh, wishing happy Diwali to all the participants to start with. So, uh, uh, quickly, a couple of questions. First, uh, you know, in the last couple of years, uh, you know, something or the other has uh, continue to bog us down in terms of execution. I think we, we hit a quarterly high somewhere in mid-2020, you know, about 164 crores of fat. And uh, then, you know, uh, obviously a lot of uh, things have happened since then. But it, would it be safe to assume that, uh, you know, with the IT incidents and the third-party logistics issue behind us, we can look at next few quarters uh, you know, a strong set of uh, execution and uh, on a much higher revenue base. Can we expect that, uh, you know, we can have much better profitability? Like, should we look at, uh, you know, most of these execution challenges or sporadic issues are now behind us and we can look for a few quarters of very strong execution let growth for the company? I think uh, uh, IT issues uh, are almost behind us and uh, the raw material prices have started uh, stabilizing much lower uh, at a lower level 
so uh, i think it will the, the residual impact of some of these uh, uh, issues on the execution will be there for a quarter or so but as we expect the operations coming back to normalcy and then the execution going to a higher level our capacity is coming up in quarter 4 and quarter 1 you can see progressively there will be a very good improvement and uh, we are all striving to achieve that got it sir and the uh, sharp formulation growth in us uh, is it uh, more to do with the you know your core molecules uh, you, you, uh, like something to do with the core molecules or is it uh, the newer molecules have now started to contribute at a higher run rate I'll take that question. Um, it's a mix of um, major products, some of which are some dosage forms of the core molecules, but also a lot of them are from previously launched non-core uh, molecules. And this primarily came from uh, GPI. So, uh, so ma'am, uh, like since the new products uh, typically, you know, they have uh, given the granules uh, strategy of uh, gradually uh, looking at market share increases and you know, sustainably building the products over several years. Uh, can we say that uh, we are finally starting to get, uh, you know, meaningful traction from some of our uh, launches over, say, FY21 to 23? If you look at the IMS numbers for our market shares, um, we picked up market share quite fast for most of our major products. And there are some changes that I mentioned earlier uh, in my discussion that have happened in the market which have enabled us to pick up more market share and or um, potentially change some level of pricing with customers because um, our competitors in the market, the competitive landscape in the market changed a little bit. That's right. to, to answer your question, yes, we have uh, increased market share quite a bit, but it's not something that has grown gradually. This has, uh, we are seeing the market dynamics change, and because of brand new backward integration and all the other pillars that we have to support our um, front end, we've been able to uh, increase prices to a certain extent, very certain extent, and then sustainably grow uh, market share. You just to complete that, uh, uh, to uh, fully answer your question, some of the new launches, we were able to get a very good market share. Uh, so therefore, sir, just to follow up on this, uh, so therefore, uh, uh, we should be able to see a more consistent uh, increase further from here or, you know, the overall traction in U.S. And uh, assuming that uh, the incremental sales also pick up in Europe once you have fully normalized uh, from Q3 and beyond, uh, can we expect that the overall contribution from formulations will continue to trend up or be, remain strong in percentage terms? Absolutely. You see uh, an increasing trend of formulation and active terms. Like I mentioned earlier in this call, we have seven approvals, um, sorry, seven uh, launches over the second half, most of which, the market share of which will be seen through the next couple of quarters. So outside of that, we also have new products uh, being approved in the next fiscal year. Like Dr. Ramara mentioned, we have a double digit uh, and the filing uh, that we're aiming to achieve this year, all those products, some of the products might be approved in FY25, and there'll be a continuity of it in FY26. So FT will be a strong pillar of our growth globally, supported very strongly by our growth and investment into PSIs and APIs. Great. Uh, just one last uh, on the overall strategic uh, initiatives going forward. Uh, so you know we see a lot of emphasis in the last uh, few quarters on uh, R&D and innovation. Uh, and also, you know, uh, the work that is being done in controlled substances and new technologies, uh, which was also mentioned earlier in this call. Maybe if you can highlight few more qualitative details and as well as highlight the path to commercialization of these new molecules or these new initiatives across enzymes uh, and biocatalysis, as well as some of the work that is being done of the Pune laboratory. Yeah, it's. Uh, uh, I think uh, highlighting on the qualitative side, definitely, uh, you know, on the enzymes, we have uh, we have really uh, gone ahead with the three molecules, as I mentioned in my speech, and then uh, we will be looking forward to commercialization of at least two molecules in the coming 12 to 14 months. Uh, 
commercialization plan uh, and then when you really look at the entire portfolio it is very very clear to mention that we have different type of products and we are also looking at something slightly outside the oral so oral, oral solid forms first wave launches and also we are looking at nc minus 1 filings all this endeavor is uh, from the strategic side is to ensure that we have a very healthy pipeline and uh, focused on a1 launches so we got propensity to pick up market shares through the global cost leadership backward integration uh, i think we will be able to clearly see that as the pipeline keeps filling up year on year and these are all the launches which are likely to happen if things go well between 26 to 30 so with that type of a, a mid term and a short term plan together in the portfolio i think as what priyanka has very clearly stated that we will be seeing the launches and we will be seeing the actually the market share picking up for these new products and uh, i have also stated in my speech that we are also looking at global cost leadership and this is very important from the perspective that always the generic pricing in the markets uh, both us and europe is going to go down so should we need to compete then i think uh, a uh, cost leadership is an important element and therefore as an overall strategy we have a portfolio we have launches from uh, approval products to the wave ones to the ncs and then cost leadership something put together should give a lot of value to organization in the next couple of years uh thanks sir if just one last if i may please very quickly uh we uh, you mentioned on the uh, formulation side Uh, have any of the new products uh, already uh, surpassed uh, methocarbon mol and guanfenicin for us in terms of uh, contribution to revenues on an annualized basis yes a few products have been far better than them uh fantastic sir thank you so much wish you all the very best thank, thank you. you thank you thank you in the interest of time that was our last question I now would like to hand the conference to the management for closing comments. Once again, thank you very much, uh, ladies and gentlemen, for attending this call. And I would like to end this on a very positive note, saying that we do expect to do better quarter on quarter, and uh, we will all uh, be seeing better results going forward. So, with this, I wish you all a a very happy upcoming Diwali. Thank you very much. Thank you. On behalf of Granules India Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect.